Good morning and welcome to Empowerment Hour. No need to silence your device. Your worship experience is just moments away.
praise God for this opportunity to be able to come together and worship one more time. We welcome all of you. We welcome all of you. Facebook Live, thank you for joining us for Empowerment Hour with St. Stephen's AME Zion Church. Hallelujah. I come to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else come to bless him? Glory to God. God is an awesome God. And yes, I lift his name on high. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, yes, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Hallelujah. That's enough to rejoice about. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for this another day. You woke us this morning. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You kept the death angels away. Thank you, God. And now, Lord, as we have gathered together to worship, we're connecting God via airways, Facebook Live, and here in the chapel. God, we thank you for your presence. We know that you are an omnipresent God and that you're here right now. So, God, we yield ourselves to you. And God, we offer unto you our sacrifice of praise, our sacrifice of thanksgiving. We give honor and praise to you, O God, for you are God and God alone. Anoint us afresh, O Lord. Have your way in this place. Have your way in us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you're glad today, come on and give God a praise. Glory be to God. Glad to be in the number one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our hymn of praise this morning, hymn 508. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Glory to God. Let us join together in uplifted voices. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to upon his promise just to know the said the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him old and old Jesus Jesus pray Jesus, 
us Oh, for grace to trust Him more Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus Just to trust His cleansing blood Just in simple faith to plunge me Neath the healing, cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove <coughs> Jesus, Jesus <coughs> Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus just from sin and step to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace jesus jesus how i trust him i prove him over and over jesus jesus precious jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me. Will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. It is sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen, amen. This morning... We want to look at Exodus chapter 12. Amen. Exodus chapter 12. We'll begin reading at verse 1. From the New International Version. Amen. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. 
The animals you choose must be year old males without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month. When all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the, most, the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Thus in the reading of God's word. Exodus 12 verses 1 through 14. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it's now time that we can go to God in prayer. And I'm so thankful that we have a God who cares for us. A God who has said unto us, to cast all of our cares upon him. Ah, why? Because he cares for us. He's a God that hears and answers our prayers. Amen. Let us now look to the Lord in prayer. And we ask if you so desire, if you want to put a name on the screen that we might Pray for them. Just put in their name on there. We know that they're being lifted up in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh God, our Father. God, we thank you right now. We realize, God, that we can't thank you enough for all that you do. You've been a mighty good God. As a matter of fact, Lord, you're good right now. Even in spite of the hurt that some may be feeling right now, you're still good. Even in spite, Lord, of the pain that somebody might be going through right now, you're still good. Lord, even in spite of bad news, bad reports, you're still good. And for that, God, hallelujah, we're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord. For, Lord, we know that you have kept us through dangers seen and dangers unseen. 
And now, Lord, as we look to you, God, we say thank you, God. We praise your holy name. And God, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to forgive us of any words, thoughts, or deeds that we've done contrary to your will. Oh, God, forgive us, Lord. And help us, oh, God, that we might continue to look to you, Lord, that you might give us guidance, that you might help us, Lord, that we can turn from our wicked ways, Lord, that we can defeat the enemy, Lord, that we, Lord, can flee from the devil. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, empower us, Lord. And Father, we pray for those that are going through right now. God, their families that are hurting because of the death of loved ones this week. Oh, God, I know that you have not left them. I know, God, you have not forsaken them. But God, we pray that you would just surround them with your love. Let them know, Lord, that they can lean and depend on you. I lift up the Mason family. God, I lift up the Harrison family. I lift up the Avery family. God, there's so many others, so many others, Lord, that are going through this bereavement. We pray, God, for those, oh, God, whose bodies have been afflicted, sick, Lord, some gone through surgery, some, Lord, gone through various procedures, but yet, Lord, we thank you because you brought them through. God, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, touch those sin-sick souls, God. Touch the sin-sick souls because you are a healing God. I know, God, that you can deliver. God, we thank you right now. And Father, we ask, oh Lord, those that are going through financial difficulties. Oh God, somebody right now, Lord, might be scratching their head trying to figure out what am I going to do? Where I go? Where do I go from here? Somebody, Lord, may be trying to figure out how do I keep my house? How do I keep food in the refrigerator and in the cupboard? How do I continue to make a way for my family? But God, I read in your word that you said you would supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory. So, Lord, we look to you. God, have your way. We know, Lord, that you can touch the hearts of people, that people will move, Lord, and begin to bless others that are standing in need. That's who we are. We are your children, God. Help us to do your will. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will just move in this place today, this worship service, oh God. Have your way, God. Every listening ear, God. Speak Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Speak Holy Spirit. Uh, God, speak that we might hear. Let conviction come, Lord. Let correction come, God. Let chastisement come. God, that we might be made the better for you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you, and I thank you, God, for all that you're doing. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know if you feel like I feel. Hallelujah. But I'm reminded of how Shirley Caesar said, I feel like praising him. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like praising him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. God is a good God. God is a loving God. He's an awesome God. He's a worthy God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Again, I want to say welcome to all of you that have tuned in to our worship experience and I'm reminded I was to give a shout out on last Sunday to my first cousin and friend Beverly Dewberry so I'm doing that today a shout out to Beverly thank you for joining us Beverly all the way in South Carolina thank you for joining us in worship amen Certainly, we're grateful for all of you, 
And we want to remind you again that as we go through these days, remember the three W's. It's so important, so important. We continue to hear reports of those that have been contracted with the coronavirus, but we ask that you would try your best. Amen. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, wear, wear, wear your mask. Wait. Wait six feet distance from others. Amen. Yes, yes. And wash. Frequently wash your hands. Amen. Because we want to live this day to live again. To live another day. Then another day. And another day. Amen. We want to be safe. So let us practice social distancing. Amen. And we're thankful for all of you that continue to be so faithful in your giving, the giving of the tithes and offerings. And for those of you who have just felt in your heart to sow a seed in this ministry here at St. Stephen's AME Zion Church, we're grateful. We want you to know that we appreciate it. Amen. And please know that it's being sown into good seed, into good soil. Amen. We thank you so very much. Praise God. As we continue on in our service, I'm thankful to have Mr. Jeremiah Dewberry this morning as our pianist, our musician this morning. We thank God for him, uh, pinch hitting for his mother, amen, to Wani. So we're grateful to the Lord for his service, amen. <clears throat> May we now prepare our hearts for the word of God. As we look again at Exodus, the 12th chapter, I want to call your attention to verses 12 through 14. It says, On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you ought to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Amen. I want to talk this morning from the subject, when I see the blood, when I see the blood. Let us pray. God of mercy. God of grace, here I am, Lord. I'm nothing without you. But God, you called me. God, you anointed and appointed me. So I stand here this morning, Lord, to give your name glory. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. God, I thank you right now. You are my savior. You are my Lord. God, have your way. Have your way. Let your anointing, God, flow from heart to heart and breast to breast. Do, God, whatever you desire to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 When I see the blood. Right. 
the children of Israel are in Egyptian bondage. And Moses has been sent to Pharaoh to tell him that the Lord, yeah, the God of the Hebrews said, let my people go. The Egyptians have already had to endure or suffer through nine plagues. The Nile River being turned into blood, the frogs, the gnats, the flies, disease upon their livestock, boils, hail, locusts, and darkness. All because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, his refusal to obey God. Pharaoh's refusal to let God's people go. I, I could just stop right there and preach a sermon about being obedient to God's commands. But as we look at this chapter here, in the first few verses of chapter 12. The Israelites are instructed to prepare for the tenth plague. Egypt has already gone through nine plagues and now Israel is being instructed to prepare for the tenth plague. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying. Israel is being instructed to prepare but the plague shall come upon Egypt. My God, my God. <sighs> Somebody ought to say the tenth plague. <laughs> yeah, they were to prepare by choosing a lamb. Not just any lamb, but they were to choose a lamb with it, for every household, a lamb without defect, a lamb without spot or blemish. They were even instructed to take the lamb on the tenth day. They had specific instructions on what to do. They were instructed to take the lamb on the tenth day of the first month. Verse 6 of that chapter says, Take care of them until the 14th day of the month. The lamb, my brothers and sisters, was to be slaughtered on the 14th day. So they had to take the lamb on the 10th day and take care of that lamb until the 14th day. My, my, my. Moses gave them specific instructions. The Israelites, the Israelites were to slaughter the lamb at twilight on the 14th day. Verse 7 says, then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb." So they, they, they chose these lambs and they had to take care of them from the 10th day to the 14th day. But when they slaughtered the lambs at twilight on the 14th day, they were going to take the blood, take some of the blood and put it over the door frames. <laughs> mm. ah, and they were even instructed how to prepare the lamb. After they had slaughtered the lamb and put blood over the doorpost, they were now to prepare the lamb to feast on it. Ah, the lamb was to be roasted over fire. They were told not to boil it, not, not to cook it in water, not to eat it raw, 
but they were to roast the lamb over a fire. <laughs> yes, sir. Not only were they told how to cook it, but they were told how to eat it, when to eat, what to eat, what to do with what is left over, what to wear when they ate it. And this is what the Lord was saying to them. And he was saying, it's the Lord's Passover. <laughs> yes, sir, the Lord's Passover. Verse 7 says, then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. This is the Lord's Passover. And thus, we come to the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn males. The death angel was to come through Egypt and kill every firstborn male, both man and animal. Word of God says, I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, God was saying, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. But we read in the text that God said he's going to come and deal with all of the gods of Egypt. Somebody needs to understand that our God is a jealous God. He said, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. We are not to worship idol gods. So he's going to destroy the gods of Egypt. Amen. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will not, I will not let any harm or danger come nigh thee because of the blood. If you put the blood over the door, the blood will be a sign and no destructive plague will touch you because of the blood. Right. My God, my God. God said, when I see the blood, because of the blood sprinkled over their doorpost, the blood from a lamb without defect. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Because of the blood, Israel was protected. Yes, God's judgment was coming upon the land of Egypt. And Israel is in Egypt, but yet God's blood, the blood that was spread over the doorpost. God said, when I see the blood, <laughs> I'll pass over you. Because of the blood, Israel was Protected because of the blood, Israel was rescued. Because of the blood, Israel was set free from bondage. My God, my God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, it's good to know that the blood rescues, the blood protects, the blood frees us, the blood saves. Because of the blood, Israel was spared from the judgment of the firstborn. Israel was under the blood that was placed over their door frame. Hallelujah. When I think about the blood over the door frames, and God said, when I see the blood, my God, my God, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. So I come to tell somebody, stay under the blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Stay under the blood. During this coronavirus pandemic, Get under the blood and stay under the blood during this hatred pandemic. Get under the blood and stay under the blood during this racial pandemic. Get under the blood and stay under the blood during this economic downfall. Get under the blood and stay under the blood. Shaken by these hurricanes, earthquakes, floods and tsunamis get under the blood and stay under the blood there's safety <laughs> hallelujah under the blood ah the passover the passover the lord said this is the lord's 
Passover. Hallelujah. The death angel shall come and pass over, but when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Amen. God goes on to tell them that this is the day you ought to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. You ought to remember this. You ought to celebrate this. You ought to commemorate this, that the Lord saved you from destruction. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. You see, my brothers and sisters, as I think about the blood, since the first Sunday in March, we have not been able to assemble ourselves together on first Sundays. First Sundays when we would customarily share in the Holy Communion, share in the Lord's Supper, where we commemorate the death and resurrection of Jesus. Yes, the time when we would have the opportunity to share together the bread. Yes, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Share together in the wine, representing the blood that Jesus shed for us. We may not be able to see the blood ourselves, but we can reflect on the blood. God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. But we need to reflect on the blood. Let us just take a little time to reflect on the blood. I don't know about you, but I miss having communion. Oh, God, I miss being able to come together to share in the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. So I thought this morning, as I look at this text, how God used the blood to save the children of Israel. Hallelujah. To let the blood be a remedy for them. I thought about it, and I just wanted to have the table set this morning for communion. I know we can't have communion, but I can still remember the blood that Jesus shed for us. While the table is set, we can remember what the blood represents for us. The blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross. The blood came streaming down, streaming from the Lamb, from the Lamb of God, the Lamb without defect, a Lamb without spot or blemish, because we know that Jesus was the Lamb of God, is the Lamb of God, and Jesus did not have any sin. He was free from sin, created or did not have any sins. Good God Almighty, the blood that Jesus shed. He was the lamb that hung on the cross, shed his blood for you and me. That blood that cleanses our sins. 1 John 1 and 17 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all our sin. Can I get a witness in this place? The blood that Jesus shed, that blood that never loses his power, that blood that reaches to the highest mountain, that blood that flows to the lowest valley, no matter where you find yourself, 
You may be on the mountaintop or in a deep, dark valley, but the blood of Jesus has power to save your soul. The blood of Jesus can wash you white as snow. The blood of Jesus can rescue you from the very pits of hell. The blood of Jesus can cleanse you, can strengthen you. The blood of Jesus that was shed for me and you. I come to tell you, when we reflect on his blood, reflect on the fact that Jesus said, as often as you do this, as you drink the blood and eat the body, do it in remembrance of me. We ought to commemorate his blood. We ought to commemorate his dying for us. Can I get a witness? Commemorate or remember the resurrection. Somebody needs to know when God sees the blood. He said, when I see the blood, don't you know that one day he's coming back? And when he comes, I need you to know when he sees the blood that you've been washed, that you've been transformed by his blood. God will give you eternal life. God will give you eternal life. He will rescue you when he sees the blood has covered you. God will, good God Almighty, give you victory. I thank God for the blood. This represents the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood that cleanses us. That blood, that redemptive blood, for it was the blood that Jesus paid the price for your sins and mine. When God sees the blood that covers our sins, when he looks at us, when he sees the blood, he sees his son. I thank God for the blood. Thank God for that blood, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, the blood that never loses its power, that blood that reaches to the highest mountain, that blood that flows to the darkest valley, that blood huh, that saves us, huh, that blood huh, that lifts us up, huh, thank God, huh, I thank God, huh, I thank God, huh, yes I do, huh, I thank God huh, for the blood, huh, when I think about huh, his blood, huh, when I reflect huh, on what he done, huh, I was a wretch, huh, undone but yet God saw me as I was and allowed Jesus the Lamb of God to be sacrificed for my sins but not just mine but for the sins of the whole world Thank God he shed it, his blood. Thank God for Jesus letting his life give up. Good God Almighty, the ghost 
Christ for you and me. I'm glad I can only imagine when the children of Israel realized that the death angel had come over them and their lives were spared. The firstborn males were still alive. Israel's firstborn males were still alive because of the blood. I can only imagine they were rejoicing because they knew God has reached out his hand to rescue us, to release us from bondage. God has come down to free us, to give us liberty. Can I get a witness? Don't you know he sent Jesus that we might have liberty. Thank God. I don't know about you, but the sign of the blood is upon my life. I'm under, under the blood. I'm under, under the blood. And I'm going to stay under the blood. I'm going to stay under the blood. The blood that Jesus shed. That blood that Jesus shed. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. That blood that Jesus shed, it strengthens me every day. God will, God will take care of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you to lose, lose hope. I don't want you to lose hope. I know we're living in difficult times. Hallelujah. And I know you miss coming together just as I do. To sh Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To be able to share in the Lord's Supper. But just reflect on the body and the blood of Jesus. Reflect on how good he's been to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you were sinking deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, hallelujah, had nobody to rescue you, but Jesus came to your rescue. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it. I thank God for the blood, that redemptive blood. When John the Baptist, the forerunner for Christ, when he was proclaiming to them Jesus, John said to them in John chapter 1 verse 29, he said, look! Hallelujah, God, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you're living in sin, if you're living a sinful life, Jesus died. To free you from sin. To cleanse you from sin. To take away your sins. You don't have to be held captive any longer. You don't have to be held in bondage any longer. Hallelujah, God. If you don't know Jesus, you ought to get to know him today. You ought to surrender your heart, your all to him today. 
and let his blood cleanse you. For God said, when I see the blood, uh, I will pass over you. I'm not looking to be destroyed in the last day. Hallelujah. I'm looking for my eternal blessing, eternal life. Because of the blood. Glory to God. If you don't know him, I want to invite you to receive Christ today. As we pray, I pray that you pray with me. If you don't know him, let us pray. God, we humbly bow our heads and sincerely call upon your name. And God, we acknowledge our sinfulness, our sorrow for how we have sinned against you. And God, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you, Lord, to save us. Save, Lord. Save to the utmost. Let the blood of Jesus, glory to God, wash us, Lord, through and through. I know, Lord, that you can take away all of our filthiness. So, God, we give ourselves to you right now, saying, Lord, have your way. God, we thank you. We thank you. And, God, we bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed. Yes, it gives me strength from day to day. Today, it will never lose its power. Every chance. To the highest mountain, oh yes, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose each power. Let's say it one more time. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can bank on that. The blood, will, hallelujah, will never lose its power. Glory to God. And I want to say, if there's one that surrendered your heart to Jesus today, we ask that you would just send us your name. Send us your name and number that we might pray with you, call you, and chat with you. Amen. Because we love you. We love you. And it's joy to my soul for someone to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. And we also want to remind you that we do have the prayer request that you may send in your prayer request. Amen. That we might be in prayer with you and for you as we continue throughout the week. I'm thankful for the blood that was shed for me and for the world. Amen. Let us look to the Lord to be dismissed. God, our Father, as we prepare now to leave this place to sign off, God, we want to stay connected to you. But God, we ask that you would cover us all week long. Keep us, Lord, in your care. And God, we thank you for the blood that was shed for us. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To him be glory, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the redeemer of the Lord say amen, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for worshiping with us. Please share today's message with someone in need. See you next week. Be blessed.